Aloha! Welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We are a weekly show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock in the downtown studios of ThinkTech Hawaii and Pioneer Plaza. We highlight successful individuals and businesses in Hawaii and, and explain how they made things work and what they're up to. Uh, there are a lot of challenges in Hawaii, but there are successful individuals who have figured out how to get around those challenges and make things work. So today we're going to be talking to Unyong Nakata, who is a Senior Director of Development at the University of Hawaii, Scheidler College. And she also holds a Chair Elect position over the Chamber of Commerce a Young Professional Program. So we're going to be talking about both pieces, but the, the real exciting piece of this is uh, how much she's accomplished in a short period of time and how well she's doing out there at Scheidler. Welcome. Glad to have you on the show. Thank you, Reg. I'm so happy to be here. Can you uh, just spend a few minutes and, and explain a little bit about you know your background, where you're from, and, and how did you end up doing what you're doing today? Sure. So I'm actually a military brat, and I was born in South Korea, and my stepfather, who adopted me, was in the Air Force. And so the first time I lived in Hawaii, we lived in Hickam Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. I remember I lived on 17th Street, 17B. <laughs> And then my mom got homesick, and so we requested to live in Korea. So we spent quite a number of years on an Air Force base in Korea. And after that, I came back to Hawaii my sophomore year, and I've been here sophomore ever since. Sophomore year in high, in high school? school. Okay. Which, um, as you can imagine, it's a little tough to break into the Hawaii uh, community as a sophomore because everyone's been growing up since uh, small kind days, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I, I talked a little different, I dressed a little different. And which high school was that? I went to the oldest high school in Oahu, President William McKinley High School. Oh, McKinley. Right, right. Right, right downtown. <laughs> mm, good. So I've been here ever since, since the summer of Iniki, Hurricane. Oh. That, that's a date to remember. It was. So I'll never forget the year that I came, the summer of 1992. But since then, I've been here, and I'm very, very proud, and I'm privileged to call Hawaii my home. Very good. Yeah. All right. And so did you, uh, after McKinley, you went to college, I assume? I did. So I went to the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and okay. would you believe it, I actually majored in microbiology. Really? So science is my first love. And uh, I think nerds rule the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't want to argue with that. Otherwise, my computers may all fail me tonight. So, <laughs> go ahead. So, I loved bacteria and viruses and immunology and genetics and all those things. But um, when you have a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology, there's not much you can do in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. So, while I was working at a research project, I actually went back for my MBA. And at that time, it was called... College of Business right. at UH Manoa. I remember those days. Yeah. Right. And I uh, graduated from their long-standing part-time evening MBA program. Mm. And after that, um, I would say my life and my career really changed course. And I had a eye for marketing. And I was really privileged to be hired by someone named Lonnie Starkey at the UH Foundation, who recently just left the foundation, started his own consulting firm. And he really took me under his wing, and I found this wonderful world of philanthropy. And how long ago was that? It was over 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So you've been with the UH for quite a while. I have been. Very good. Yeah. And so you've, you've been there the whole 10 years, kind of just evolving into the senior director position you have now? I have. So I started in the Office of Estate and Gift Planning. Mm -hmm. And shortly thereafter, I got a phone call, literally a phone call, from Dean Vance Rowley. And at uh -huh. the time, I was serving on the Shire College of Business Alumni Association board. Mm -hmm. And that's how we knew each other. And he offered me a position at Shire as their associate director of development. 
And to be really cliche about it, the rest is history. Um, I get so much joy and so much fulfillment from serving my alma mater mm -hmm. and really just paying it forward. So I went to, I was enabled by a scholarship myself when I was at UH Manoa, when I was studying microbiology mm -hmm. by the Herbert H. Lee Scholarship. So now to be on the other side and raising funds for students and faculty and programs and buildings, it really, really, it fills my cup. Well, it's very rewarding to know that you're working in an area that's actually allowing people in the state to obtain this higher level of education. I mean, how many, you must have put a lot of students through University of Hawaii over the last 10 years. Well, I was a small part of that. So me and many, many wonderful people that I work with, yes, yes, it's, it's, it really feels great. I love being able to go home and, you know, seeing my husband and seeing my daughter and when I look at my daughter I can I can know that uh, I did something good that day I did a plus one that day good good it's, it's nice to have that passion and that, that pride in what you're doing now uh, Shidler's got some pretty interesting programs too that we were talking a little bit about earlier that uh, you know and, and you know I, I, I'm a UH alumni and my Yay! wife is and my three sons Yay! are and so we all have this connection <laughs> there but there's a lot going on over there that uh, you know has been for a while and very successful that you kind of educated me on. So, you know, like Vietnam, for example, uh, you know, 15 years. I didn't realize it was that long, but they've got a good program over in Vietnam. We do, we do. So we have so much good that's happening, and I know that we're both big proponents of uh, showcasing the good, mm -hmm. right, in the of state and the world. So when Dean Vance Rowley arrived in uh, January 2005. The college was good, and that's why he came, he said, because there was great potential. So we had uh, six faculty endowments, and now we have 38. Wow. Huge. Right. And this helps us recruit and retain world-class faculty, which has exponential benefits for students, right? Absolutely. I don't know what the stats were at the time, but today we give away on average a million dollars every school year in scholarships which I'm very, very passionate Just about. Just for Scheidler? Just for Scheidler. That's amazing. So what does this do? It helps students graduate on time, without debt, but also frees up their time. See, that's that's so unfair, because I think when I was going to Scheidler, they were only giving <laughs> away a couple hundred dollars a year. Oh, <laughs> you can come back. <laughs> and uh, as you mentioned, um, one of our star programs, we have a robust executive education program. And part of that, we have an e EMBA and a distance EMBA and a healthcare track EMBA, which, which you're on the advisory board for. Thank you yes. so much. Mm -hmm. And, um, but one of those is the Vietnam Executive MBA, which we celebrated 15 years of just this past summer in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh. And a few years ago, maybe five years ago, the Financial Times stated that the companies led by our VEMBA alumni account for 25% of the country's GDP. See, that, that is so impressive. And that's something that we really, and we don't, I haven't heard enough about that here in Hawaii. I mean, that's a success story all by itself. It is, it is. It's a one, you know, and even a few years ago, Senator John Kerry mentioned our Vietnam Executive EMBA program as something concrete that is a positive towards U.S.-Vietnam relations. Now, that was a real big moment for us. Yeah, and I know, you know, uh, at the time, I think Secretary Ter Kerry, he's a Vietnam veteran, I'm a mm -hmm. Vietnam veteran, um, I'm a member of a Vietnam veterans group. And, you know, we, we have conversations about, you know, some of the, the legacy that we left behind. I, I think it's good that we are doing something positive to try to fix the wrong that we did in Vietnam. Right. Yeah, and this is this is good. And the wrong I'm talking about is that we left them hanging there and it, it created some problems. So we're back, we're helping, we're helping rebuild the economy, we're doing some very positive things. Uh, we need to continue doing that and we need to let the, the rest of the world know. We do, this and this is, is a great start. It is, right? it is, that's right. I'm hoping that we can at least touch 10 or 20,000 people from this. <laughs> Yeah, so this this is exciting, and, and for those that don't quite understand what that executive MBA program is, it's basically we send professors over there, right? We do. You're absolutely right. So, the reason why we are the most successful and highly branded and recognized program in Vietnam is because we are teaching our curriculum in English 
with our professors. And so it's a very intense program. It's not like the regular EMBA or the distance EMBA here where it's 22 months and it really fits your work schedule. This is, let's say, 13 weeks and you're cramming in one course. And imagine financial economics with Jack Siderhout in 13 weeks. But they, it's, like, it's like boot camp. They just l absolutely love it. So someone that we both love, Dr. Dave Bess. Of course, Dave. And uh, so he's one of our star faculty that are asked to go over to teach in the VEMBA program. And it's a real privilege because we want to send our best faculty. Of course. And uh, they go over, they spend a couple of weeks, they really bond with the students, and the students go through an entire course in that short amount of time. And that is what makes our program special, amongst other things. Yep, no, it, that's a, a great program that we need to really encourage and continue to do. As a matter of fact, we should probably get some federal dollars to help do that because that's, <laughs> that's a good message that's coming from Definitely. the United States, let's do not it. just Hawaii. Let's yeah. do it. So let's talk to our congressional delegation let's about do it. that. <laughs> Yeah, and then of course we have the uh, the executive MBA program in healthcare that's relatively yes. new. It's just uh, I guess we've only had it for a couple of years now. Yes. Yeah, you know, and that's going well from what I understand. Yes. Um, just a lot of neat programs over there. There are, you know, something that we're in our fifth year of, but um, I, I would say most people don't know is that for since 1949, the College of Business, the shy of the College of Business now, has been admitting students at the junior level. So they come to UH Manoa, they um, finish their freshman year, their sophomore year, they finish their course, and they apply to be admitted into the shy of the College of Business. That's the traditional model. It is, it is, right? Your two wonderful sons who are very successful follow that model. But what we realized was, was that we were passive in that process. Mm -hmm. So to compete with other universities around the world, we had to be more active. Right. And that required us to admit students at the freshman level. Very mm -hmm. high achieving, high SAT scores, high GPAs, straight from high school into Scheither. So we're actually in our fifth academic year. It's going very, very well mm -hmm. from public and private high schools. Um, a lot from California. Really? Really. So we, really have, an, we have a tuition agreement with uh, California where they only pay 150% 150, uh, 150 of tuition. The well, resident that's level. better than a regular out yeah. tuition. <laughs> it totally <laughs> is. It totally is. So these freshmen, they get, um, most of them get a $1,000 uh, scholarship and they get mentoring, career services. They get to go on study abroad because we also spend, send the most number of students on study abroad on scholarship. And by the time they're at the junior level, they're just ready to take on the world. And so it's going really well. Well, and they're also comfortable in the environment. And they, they're probably a little bit more focused. They know exactly what they want to do, and they're, they're more uh, you know, focused and moving in that direction. So Absolutely. Laser focused. Yeah. And Absolutely. That, that, that's great. I know that you know, for, mo for most students, at least historically, it just takes a while or you know, a year or two to get into the campus environment, to, to explore all the different options, mm -hmm. and to be able to decide exactly what it is that you want to major in. Mm -hmm. But for those that already have a pretty good idea of what they want to do. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to get a running start into it. It is, it is. And we hired a special uh, counselor just for them as well because they do need that extra attention. We have to remember that they are 18 and 19 years old. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's, that's very good. Um, you know, we also have something else in common that we haven't talked about, um, and we will be doing a little bit more of that, uh, you know, after we come back from the break. But basically, it's a um, Chamber of Commerce connection. Yes. You know, and, uh, you know, you've done so well out at the university, uh, and you're also doing equally well with the Young Professional Program at the uh, Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. And so we want to speak a little bit about that, but uh, we're going to go on break here shortly, and we're going to be back in about 60 seconds. Nick, are we good for going on break? Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, and I host Condo Insider. We talk about issues facing the Condo Association throughout Hawaii and talk about solutions. When you think about it, about one third of our population lives in some form of common interest real estate. We broadcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Please tune in. Tune in and thank you. Aloha. 
Feliz Navidad. Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas from Hibachi Talk. And all of us here at Think Tank Hawaii. Aloha, Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, and I'm inviting you to navigate the journey. We are discussing the end of life options, and we would really love to have you every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. right here. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Today we're talking uh, with the University of Hawaii and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, one of the more successful uh, individuals that are involved in both sides is Ong Yong Nakata, who has gotten a senior role over at the, the Scheider School of Business in the, uh, the fundraising and, and development area, uh, and then also is the chair-elect for the Chamber of Commerce Young Professional Program, and she's going to be uh, taking over probably in about less than a year or so, I guess, uh, maybe six months. <laughs> uh, but before we get over to the Chamber and the Young Professional Program, uh, there was a, a couple of final comments we wanted to make about the, the University of Hawaii Scheider School, School of Business. And that is? There was, there was. You know, um, I couldn't uh, ever speak about the Scheidler College of Business without actually mentioning Mr. Scheidler. Of course. And what, what else, what could I say about Mr. Scheidler? Uh, such a unique individual, so generous, um, actually very down to earth, uh, very funny, has the best colorful socks, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> very committed, very loyal. So when uh, Dean Vance Rowley arrived in January 2005, um, from there, Mr. Scheidler's first gift uh, went public in 2006, and that was uh, $25 million. And we launched many things. One of them, For go $25 ahead. million, dollars, he can wear whatever color socks <laughs> he wants to. <laughs> so we, um, we're so grateful to name the college in his honor, launch a full-time MBA program, um, seed many faculty endowments, um, amongst many other things. And since then, uh, he's been quietly giving several million more for the building. And then in October 2014, as I hope most everyone in the community knows, we announced the visionary gift, which was Mr. Scheidler's commitment to give another 69 million to bring his total giving to 100 million. I don't think the University of <laughs> has had anybody as generous as that. No, so he's actually the most generous, by fact, uh, person in the entire state of Hawaii. So after him is Mr. Omidyar. Oh, yes. So, and of course, that's not why he gave. He's all about difference, impact, and leveraging, right? He always says, you can't change where you went to school, but you can change the school where, where you went, oh, right? Yeah, and true. that might not be an exact quote, but that's the spirit of his quote. And uh, one of the things that Mr. Scheidler seeded was our Pacific Asian Center for Entrepreneurship. Mm. And, you know, something's changing in the community. Small business, entrepreneurship, tech, innovation. Mm -hmm. It's happening. It's really happening. Mm -hmm. Besides hospitality and government, there is something meaty there. It can happen. So we successfully just closed a $3 million campaign. And with many, many people, business leaders, community leaders, and donors and friends in the community. And what did the $3 million do? One, we have a new center. It's amazing. It's called Space for Scheidler Pace. Although Susan Yamada, the executive director, says, no, it's for Susan Pace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <it laughs> we, sounds like Susan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we love her. So, and we uh, increased our programs from 15 to 25. And it's securing the long-run future of the Entrepreneurship Center. Well, you know, and some of the students, and I spoke out at this group, and, and they're very motivated, they're, they're intense, they're serious about what they're doing. It's an exciting group of people to speak with. They're passionate, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. Very good. You know, that's a great program, and, and it's so nice to, to have benefactors at the university that's able to make that all happen. That's right. That's super. Um, you know, can we talk a little bit about the chamber? I'd love to. You know, the, the chamber, you know, I'm involved in the chamber. I was on a formal, uh, formerly I was on a board and treasurer of the organization, and then I'm now the chair of the uh, Small Business Out to More Committee. And when I was with HMAA, I helped sponsor uh, and, and provide some capital to start the YP program. You did. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, Jacob was one. Jacob, no. He was he was one of our assets that we contributed to the program. I'm sorry, oh, Jacob. great <laughs> asset. Great yeah, asset. Yeah, he was. He's a good guy. He is a great asset. Uh, and so he, he took the lead on that. And we funded some of that. We got that going. Um, and it has flourished. It has done very well. And, and you've been a big part of that. 
Well, I've been a small part of that. So I joined the YP program. This is my fifth year. And I joined because my very good friend, Jennifer He, who mm -hmm. you also know, who's at the Salvation Army, she was there from the very get-go, I believe, with Kyle Okamura and several others. Yes. So she asked me to come on and chair a program called Exec Connect. Mm -hmm. And she's very smart. And uh, I found it very fulfilling and quite easy for me. It was a way for me to leverage the privilege I have at the Shire of the College of Business and the interactions I have with community and business leaders and ask them to give one hour of their time, three executives a month, and have talk stories t style yep. informal lunch with the YPs. And this is a free, this is the only free benefit to the YP members. And for over four years, I've uh, done my best and I've exhausted my entire Rolodex. I actually really recently just asked uh, the vice chair, Kyle Shelley at American Savings Bank to take over. But I've been very fulfilled and I've made great friends because the YP program, I truly believe, is the premier white, uh, young professionals program for anyone in Oahu. It is, and I've had the opportunity to participate in a couple of That's those. That's right. And it's another one of those dynamic groups of people that are, are very career focused and, you know, they want to be successful. Yes. And they ask some really good questions. I hope so. Yes. I hope so. They do indeed. And so it's, uh, you know, when you go to one of these, you got to be prepared, you know, because they, 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 sometimes they know just as much about the business as you do because they've done their that's homework, great, right? That's great. That's yeah. great. So to your point, um, what I find really fulfilling, it's not just what the YPs get from this hour. I find it's very common that the executives after the lunch feel very inspired about the next gen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's gonna be that's gonna be good too, right? They're gonna go back to First Hawaiian Bank or Deloitte and they're gonna be energized about what's come, what's bubbling up behind them. Right. You know, it, it sometimes again you hear these stories about, you know, these different generational yeah. issues and all that and and true, not true, exa you know, exaggerated or whatever. Right. But sometimes you go over to the, the program at the University of Hawaii or you go over to the Exec Connect program and you get to see those individuals that are really committed and focused. And it tends, it will change your perspective. Right, definitely, it's, definitely. It's great. Yeah. And so now as, as you move in, you're transitioning into a, another role now. You're going to be the chair-elect, right? You are the chair-elect. I am, I am. So I'm, I'm privileged to be the chair-elect. And right now, the chair is Stan Lau of Hawaii Tech Support, right. another great YP. And his uh, chair position will sunset um, June 30th. Right. And I believe that's when I will become chair. And I'm just very excited. I, I'm looking forward to um, how best I can serve the YP program and also the chamber in my new role. And when Sherry and I uh, briefly discussed this a few months ago, when actually I had to interview for the position, she asked me what my plans were. And I told her it was twofold because I, I believe in doing a few things well than a lot of things not so well, right? <laughs> so I told her my goals were, my hopes were twofold. One for our internal was um, governance. And it doesn't mean reports and structure and hierarchy, but it means um, evolving the bylaws a little bit more, creating a vice chair position, creating succession, mm -hmm. creating support, creating some structure so that it, it promotes the organization into perpetuity. Right. right, sustainability, make it... Exactly, you know, yeah, exactly. exactly. And I've learned that over time through serving on different boards, how important governance is. Frankly, I used to think governance was quite boring. <laughs> but now I see that it's very important. <laughs> well, now you're, you're actually involved in the process. Sometimes learning a new concept, you're kind of, you know, it's all conceptual, but now it's real. Right, right, you know, right. And, and it makes a difference. So the, um, the other goal was external. So the external... Uh, goal for the YP program and we actually just had a strategic planning session and we discussed this we don't know yet who uh, which organization to partner with mm -hmm. but we feel that now with our robust membership being above 260 very good it was 140 almost a year and a half ago um, it's now time to see which other organizations we can partner with but we felt it was ver we all agreed it was the right time but we want to be sure as to the why. 
I was just going to ask that. Okay, it's great to partner with right, somebody but and why? get the synergies, but right. what are you going to get out of it? Exactly. So what can we provide, but also... Uh, whichever organization we ask to partner with us, what do we want from them? Because mm -hmm. it has to be, this is what we talked about earlier, Hawaii style, mm -hmm. aloha style, right? Mm -hmm. It's got to be a win-win. It's not just take, 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 or give, 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 but win-win. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to give and take. And so, and you're going through that process now of trying to identify the different partners that you might be talking to. to right. To well, we just had our strategic plan. Yep. And so Stan led that. And um, one of the outputs of that was we at least all agreed it was the right time. And so we're going to do a little research and auditing of what uh, potential partners could be and then figuring out the why and then approaching them. Mm -hmm. That sounds like exciting times. And it is. It sounds like this is going to be kind of thought out, figured out, and then maybe launch just in time for you to take over as chair. That's the plan. I'm a planner. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, I know I've been through the cycle a few times where I would either inherit the chair position or maybe move into the chair position. Um, and sometimes my predecessor would spend the entire budget and I wouldn't have anything <laughs> left to do what was supposed to be done. Oh, no. Oh, so, no. Stan so won't do that. Tell, tell Stan <laughs> He's to be fiscally careful. prudent. <laughs> All right. Good. All right good. And actually, um, we, you know, I wish you could be a fly on the wall at these steering committee meetings. We actually have a quite a robust and a good conversation about budget and about marketing and about relationships and we, we kind of, we consider all factors and because we want to be we want to be a positive program within the chamber. We want to be a revenue generating program. Mm -hmm. And we're finally there. And this makes us really, really happy because all we want to do is support share in the chamber. Of course. Now, we're, we're down to our last 30 seconds okay. here. And so we're going to just kind of wrap up. Um, you know, but there's a lot of programs that the Chamber offers through the YP program, and you have a website that people can find out more information on? Yes. Okay, and that would be, do you know what that name is? is oh, my gosh, cocyphawaii.org. Okay, so <laughs> remember that. And then also, uh, we've got a big event coming up here in early January, don't we? Chamber Week? No. No, that's July. Uh, close to the family. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, please allow me to wish my daughter a happy seventh birthday on January 2nd. Happy birthday, Mia. You're the best. And Mommy and Daddy and Nana and Papa just love you. All right, Mia. <laughs> very good. All right, good. Um, thank you for being on the show today. Appreciate thank it you. very much. Uh, great stories about both the Chamber and the University of Hawaii. So, it's exciting times for you and for those organizations. Uh, this is Reg Baker, host of Business in Hawaii. Uh, we air every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we highlight individuals and businesses that are successful in Hawaii and share some of the secrets on how they do that. Uh, so until next week, aloha.